Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend, and today we're going to take the plunge. Joshua 1 verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. I trembled as I stood on the cement ledge of the pool. Fear knotted my stomach, and my knees knocked together in accompaniment to my racing heart. I glanced over to my friend seeking reassurance. I was hoping for a way out. I hoped she'd tell me I wasn't ready. I hoped she'd say my fear was too ingrained and I was a lost cause. Sandy just smiled, reached for my hand, and led me closer to the brink. It's time to take the plunge, don't you think? Don't get me wrong, I loved swimming. However, I had a paralyzing fear of jumping off the edge of the pool. I know the moment when that fear took root in my heart. My brother and I were taking swimming lessons through the Red Cross, and I had mastered everything up to the point of jumping off the edge of the pool, and I needed to do that in order to get my badge. I had to take the plunge. That fateful moment I watched as classmate after classmate jump off the edge of the pool with no problem at all. In fact, some of the boys were really showing off. One boy in particular was showing off a little bit too much, tripped and stubbed his toe to the point that blood was spurting everywhere. One instructor rushed him off to the first aid room and the other instructor called me up because it was now my turn to jump off the edge. Fear paralyzed me. If this boy, who was completely able body, could hurt himself, what chance did I have? It took a lot of coaxing, a lot of teasing, and a lot of peer pressure, but I finally stood near the edge of the pool and hopped. I sadly misjudged the distance between the edge of the pool and the water. The resulting scrape down my shin stung terribly. Fear dug deeper into my psyche. As the years passed, my fear grew. My heart raced every time I walked around the pool's edge. That fear progressed to the point that I couldn't even walk outside the fenced enclosure of a pool without anxiety churning in my gut. I would push past the fear so I could go for a swim on a really hot day. But the idea of me just sitting around the pool and not being in the pool was unthinkable. But every time I bowed to the fear, I gave it more control. Fear opened the door to shame. What would people think if they found out how terrified I was? I was ensnared by fear. I was trapped by pride and self-condemnation. For quite a few years, I lived at a youth with a mission base that had a pool, and that was not a very common thing. I would go for a swim late at night because we didn't have air conditioning and our little rooms got pretty hot. One summer day, as I was trying to calm my anxiety to go for a swim, the Holy Spirit invited me to step into freedom, but he would only do so with two conditions. I needed to work with him and I needed to confess my fear to a friend. Swallowing my fear of rejection and my pride, I shared my problem with a good friend who happened to be the unofficial lifeguard of our swimming pool. Although Sandy was only 16, she was extremely discerning and she knew that persuasive speech was not going to release me from my phobia. She also knew that wise counsel was unnecessary and she also knew my fear was ridiculous. No, there was only one solution. I had to take the plunge. And so I stepped beside Sandy and we walked to the water's edge. And on the count of three, I stepped into freedom. The instant my feet left the deck, I was free. Fear was no longer my master. A huge rush of victory swept over me. I shouted with joy as I surfaced. 
Multiple times that evening, I plunged into the water. By the time we locked the pool's gate behind us, all fear had gone. At every opportunity that summer, I reinforced my newfound freedom. Years later, I once again felt that same Holy Spirit gentle conviction. I had allowed other fears and anxieties to shackle me. I believed their lies and listened to them more than I listened to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. It was time once again to take the plunge. I chose to be obedient to the Lord's leading and I chose to be transparent to a trusted group of friends. As a result, I stepped into lasting freedom. If you're feeling the Holy Spirit's conviction as I've been talking, be encouraged. Now is the time for you to take the plunge past fear. Perhaps an occasional slip up has now become a persistent seer. Perhaps you feel hopelessly entangled in a codependent relationship because you allow the fear of disappointing others to overrule a healthy fear of displeasing God. Perhaps there are fears that have grown into merciless phobias. What was once a tiny little seedling has grown into a humongous redwood tree in your eyes. But there is nothing too complicated or too large that the Lord cannot dismantle or uproot. There might be momentary pain when God digs far beneath the surface, but hang on and trust the process. God will make sure that every root is, is severed, and as each root is severed, the fears, sins, and painful patterns attached to that root will wither and die. God has a huge interest in your freedom. After all, he purchased that freedom with a great price. Nothing blesses our Heavenly Father more than seeing his child enjoy an abundant life that bears much fruit. So, gather up your courage. Reach for his hand and take the plunge.